can be only one podcast and may it be the prince of the universe. Hi folks, I'm Matt and I am all by myself today. I'm um, having to do a solo one this time because even though we did get the topics together, Wes and I talked about it, he couldn't record in, in time and that's totally fine. He'll he'll be back next week. Uh, Bruce will also be here later on, I'm sure, by the uh, end of the month when uh, or whenever She-Hulk finishes. We'll be talking about that. But for today, what do I talk about for a guy who just got back from vacation and really doesn't have any topics he wanted to talk about solo? I just totally forgot that I had to do one this early. So um, I've been doing all my other podcasts, Saturday Morning Sam Flange, just a little bit about me. Everyone's been real positive about that, and I thank you for that because, to be honest, the only person who finds themselves interesting is themselves, right? Really. I, I mean, I, I'm not saying that to be you know mean. But I'm just saying that a lot of people love talking about themselves, but not many people like hearing about others. I enjoy hearing about others to a certain extent, and a lot of people have given me tons of positive feedback from the uh, couple episodes of Saturday Morning Sam Flange. Well, I did that myself. So I thought for today, <clears throat> I would do it for uh, Prince of the Universe just for a short while. And uh, since it's just me, <clears throat> you know, we'll, uh, there's not one big topic. This is kind of just a bunch of side topics here. Of things I have discussed before, but not all together as one. Um, basically, hobbies I, I used to have. Everyone knows I used to play video games. It's kind of weird because I didn't really like that many Star Wars video games. And I was reading Star Wars books. Just Star Wars and video games together didn't mesh well for me. It was either one or the other, but not both. And I, I mean, I did play some Star Wars video games, but <clears throat> it wasn't that important to me to have Star Wars video games. I like to read Star Wars books and then play regular video games. I've explained to this several times about how this how that kind of stopped was when my Xbox uh, died and we really couldn't afford to buy another one at the time so I had to wait till Christmas. Till my wife told me she was going to get me one for Christmas. And uh, during that time I picked up board games and never looked back. Now, I did over paternity leave trying to get back into the swing of playing board games. Mikey from Saturday Morning Cinema Flange uh, gave me a modded Nintendo Mini. I'd, I'd had one <clears throat> that needed a few uh, extra games uploaded to it. A modded one comes with all the Nintendo games, the Atari games, the arcade games, the Super Nintendo games. You know, I think Super NES was in I, I, Well, I'm, what was the other one, too? I can't remember. N64 was on there, too. And those are fun. And I've, I thought, well, maybe playing some old school games will get me back into it. Not that I wanted to get back into the hobby, but I wanted to experience the hobby on my paternity leave. And I did. I sat around, played a few games here and there on it, had a blast. I still do it from time to time. I brought it to the beach and played some games with my sister and my brothers, and we had a great time with it. So I still use it occasionally. But it didn't really introduce me back into the, uh, you know, the hobby of video games. <clears throat> um... Which, you know, I mean, it's, it's fun, but it's changed so much since then. Uh, newer games, I would never get into. Never get into. I, I just know I wouldn't. Too many buttons. I'm too old to learn. Uh, <laughs> to be honest. <clears throat> now, with uh, uh, the uh, Xbox, I did find my old Batman Arkham uh, games. And my things like Monkey Ball, I played it. I suck now at it. Used to be really good at it, but I suck now at it. Of course, if you don't get practice, you suck at something eventually I would say but uh, I did get to see or did get to play both of my Batman Arkham games the ones I have are Batman Arkham City and Batman Arkham Asylum Arkham Asylum came first I do have Arkham <clears throat> oh, Origins is what it was called and never got around to playing it and here's why I enjoyed the I enjoyed both the games Arkham Asylum is great probably my favorite Arkham City excellent too but a little bit too much open world and impossible to get everything done in it. Whereas Arkham Asylum, <clears throat> I don't know, man. I had what ninety-eight and a half percent of the Riddler trophies, and I still didn't get the Riddler. So I guess you got to get all one hundred. I mean, you know, all one hundred percent of the Riddler trophies. So I think I was like missing like two, maybe or something. I don't remember. But I was like, oh my gosh, I, I will never find them all. So I didn't get to capture the Riddler. Riddler's my favorite. Um, it's kind of a dud when you capture him in Arkham Asylum because it's just a recording. You get to hear him being arrested. Whereas in Arkham City, you get to, you know, try to take him down all on your lonesome if you solve enough Riddler puzzles. However, I did notice that I was wasting hours. I say wasting. I was spending hours and hours of my time at nights when the babies were sleeping <clears throat> playing the game. And I felt like, 
you know, I'd sit there for two hours, you know, or maybe even three, I think at times. And at the end of it, I'd say, hmm, was that really worth my time? Because <laughs> I got other things I'd, I'd rather be doing. And I did want to try to complete Arkham City just like I completed Arkham Asylum. I don't think you have to complete all 100% of the Riddler um, trophies to capture the Riddler. But he was the only side mission I didn't get. I got everyone else but him. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going to spend the rest of my time here, weeks on end, solving one Riddler puzzle after the next or challenge after the next. And I decided it wasn't worth my time, so I just stopped playing it. I was going to pop in Arkham Origins right after it, but then decided, no, nope, I don't need to play anymore. So the Xbox put up for good. The uh, Nintendo Mini still out from time to time. But video games, it's just not my blood anymore. It's not something I, you know, as, like I said, it's something fun, <clears throat> but not something I care to do. I, 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 you, as, as a lot of people know, you only have certain hours in the day, and you decide how you want to spend it. Now, you have your responsibilities, which hopefully you're not neglecting, so I try to follow my responsibilities first, <clears throat> you know, clean the house, taking care of the kids, stuff like that, but in your free time, that is where you get to decide what, how you want to spend your spare time, and for me, it's just not in the cards for uh, video games. Now, what about board games? <clears throat> well, everyone knows it's no secret. I love playing board games. Uh, my channel is somewhat dedicated to board games. Not really. It's been overrun with Star Wars stuff because that's what I'm known for. But I, I still will publish the uh, Friday board game review, which no one cares about. <clears throat> and that's fine. And then every once in a while, uh, Bernardo and I have been bringing back Vintage Voltron. Only as little vignettes, really. Not really as an actual show anymore. But I like talking board games still. However, I will be honest, my board game group is dying on the vine. Okay, so uh, there's one couple. He's When he goes to school, he does not have to. He's in nursing. That's a very hard school or a lot, a lot of studying to do in nursing. <clears throat> and so during the school season, he and his girlfriend, which is now his fiance, congratulations to them both, they are out. You know, they're not. She is, she's not in school, but of course she's not going to come without him. <clears throat> and neither do I expect her to. But he is out, therefore she is out, and they will come back during, you know, maybe holiday break, I'll see him, and then, of course, in the summer, which is where I got to play with him. Uh, my other friend, he is yeah, yeah, in, in and out, to be, to be fair. My wife is not really a big fan of them. They, they're kind of inconsiderate, you know, not, not, you know, not on purpose, but they're just inconsiderate people. It's, they're always about, they, they, they're not very respectful to other people, but they always feel like they're the victim. <clears throat> you know, they can be rude to other people, but they think people are rude to them. And I have tried in our in our nights where they've come over to kind of, you know, just do some conversation to kind of show them that, you know, the pendulum swings both ways. You know, uh, oh, you're so upset because you don't, no one ever calls you anymore. Well, you never call anyone yourself. And those type of people, you know, yes, they can be slightly annoying. I don't mind them. Like I said, one of them has been in my gaming group for a very long time. Uh, probably during the second wave of gamers, I think he was introduced, or the third wave. I don't know, but it, it's been he's been all, he's been uh, around the table for quite some time with my gaming group, and now that he's married, it's just him and his wife that come over, and I'll have them over every once in a while. But again, they are very hard to get a hold of now too, uh, because of uh, their schedule, what they what they have to do, and they can't really do the regular game nights, or they can't go that long as we used to, and that that's fine. But again. You know, trying struggling to find a gaming group. My nephews, not really. Not they'll play Twilight Imperium. They'll show up bells and whistles for that. Other than Twilight Imperium, they really don't have an interest in other board games now. Their interest is dying. I used to take a board game every Sunday as we ate up my parents together to play with my nephews. Now I don't because they don't want to play it. They don't want to play it. They'd rather do something else. You know, watch TV or something. Um, so gone are the days where I'm playing really board games with them regularly. Twilight Imperium, like I said, heartbeat, they'll show up. Other than that, and that's great because I love playing Twilight Imperium too, but I want to play other games. <clears throat> so for that reason, you know, probably you know, I'm losing my nephews too. 
Uh, and then on the other end, I, there is no one else. You know, my wife is not interesting in board ga- interested in board games. My children are too young. Now that'll change as of maybe a year from now or so. I may be able to play little kitty games with my girls, and as they get a little bit older, I'll be able to play vintage games with my girls. You know, something with simpler rules, and that will be fun because I'll be kind of slowly growing my own board game group with my own family, and I think that'll be super fun, especially when the other itty bitty babies get older too. That's just more fun around the table. And then I'll have the best of both worlds probably playing vintage games and then adult games with the older two. So hopefully, hopefully they'll like all that and I'll I'll be able to continue my hobby. But right now, times are lean. Times are lean. I had two brothers that would come over all the time. But now that the second brother is out of high school, they both have jobs that work evenings and they really can't anymore. I mean, they want to. But gone are the days where I could just guarantee that they would come in at the drop of a hat because they had nothing better to do. So, And, and of course, one of my favorite, uh, my good friends, who was an excellent uh, part of my board game group for actually almost since the very beginning, Nick, moved away uh, a year ago, over a year ago now. And boy, do I miss that dude. (laughs) If it was just him and me playing board games, that'd be great. That would be great. You know? And uh, so, you know, that, that it's, a, it's a hobby that I'm still keeping. I didn't get many board games. I'm not going to do my top 100 on my YouTube channel this year just because I didn't get that many new games. I got a good I got a good few, but I don't think it's enough to justify doing a top 100 again. Unless I can find, you know, someone like... Uh, I had fun doing it with Bernardo. If I can find someone else who wants to do a top 100 with me, maybe... Maybe I'll do that. That might might be uh, an option there. Like I skipped doing uh, vintage because I've really stopped getting vintage games. There's a very short list of vintage games I want, and they're kind of all too expensive. So, you know, I, I'm kind of out on vintage games too, and um, just collecting them. I should say, getting new ones. And I'm happy with my collection that I have. I believe me, I have plenty, plenty, plenty of board games. But That's a hobby that right now is kind of in a shrinking phase because I don't really have that many people who share the hobby with me. Other hobbies that I've had in the past that I've let go, a lot of people know this too because I get questions about this. I draw my own little comic books. In fact, on a lot of my streams, in the background when you see the shelves and the printer, on top of those shelves is like stacks and stacks of paper. Those are comic books I drew. And the drawers behind me are filled with the comic books I drew. Um, I, I, I did it. I think I've told the story before, but I'll tell it now. Uh, my favorite, uh, card shop, uh, comic book shop, Card Co. closed a long time ago. <clears throat> my favorite place to get comic books and baseball cards. And so me and my brother and my other best friend at the time decided all to draw a comic book in honor of them. Now, the funny thing was, my brother is a decent artist and my best friend is a great artist. And I can't draw worth a lick. But we all decided to do our own little story. He was going to do a one one comic book issue series, which I still have. He never completed it because his dog died. I, I don't know, man. I guess when your dog dies, you just lose all faith in, in your comic books. But uh, he gave me his unfinished comic book. I got it a couple years ago, and I've cherished it. My brother wanted to do a trilogy, a three-book trilogy. He did book one, book two, and then lost interest and didn't do book three. And so I was writing mine out. I was like, oh my gosh, mine's going to be 13 issues. You know, because I had a lot of funny jokes to make and stuff. I was like, well, and I remember writing it and thinking, will I ever finish this? I mean, this is 13 issues. Well, not only did I do that, it was the only one that got completed out of the three. Everyone loved it. They laughed. And then it got me to, uh, to, uh, to make more. And I'd share them with everyone. Usually I gave them away. And I kind of regret that at least the first 50 you know, because I would have liked to have some of those originals, which aren't around anymore. But uh, I gave a bunch of them away. I used to give all of them away. And then, I can't remember, around X amount of hundred of issues, I decided to start keeping them. I mean, I kept one here and there, but I've, I have, oh, hundreds of issues now I've kept. And I stopped about, it's almost been about nine years now. I stopped nine years ago. Uh, just about, and when I did my 1,000th issue ever, my 1,000th, I said, Man, this is a great place to stop, because I was still doing it on and off, still for friends who were coming over. I'd, you know, I'd give some away. I gave few away and kept more as I got older. I was like, I want to keep these, and they're fun because it's it's an exaggerated diary of my life, and I mean, any kid knows what I'm talking about, or any adult knows what I'm talking about. When you were a kid, your teachers were the bad guys, Right? 
you know, in your mind, your fancy mind, you hated your math teacher, your English teacher, your whoever it was. And that's what it was for me. <clears throat> it was my teachers were the villains, and me and my friends were the good guys. And as it kept going, and we, I did spoof characters on just about everyone in the DC universe, and then later on the Marvel universe, and so on and so forth. Image I did too, whatever was influencing me at the time. Um, villains would be people that my friends didn't like, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, people I didn't like. They were the enemy. And it was all an exaggerated thing of what would happen in real life. You know, funny little stories that I, I had in real life were exaggerated in the comic books. And it's, I, you know, I couldn't ever share these comic books because I don't think many people would laugh because they're full of inside jokes. Whoever the comic book was written for, whoever the audience was, those were the jokes I put in. Now, a lot of people... Who used to, I used to ship these out. I used to mail out my comic books to just friends back then. This is back before you know social media was a thing. I mean, email was around, but you couldn't scan and upload an image and send it, and there was no cloud. So I just drew an issue and then would put it in the mail for them. And I'd, I'd mail off several things. And, and people still finally remember those. Some people still have them, and I'd love to read them again. Someone brought me some of her, uh, the comp books that I made her way back in the day, and I was had so much fun reading over them again. And they've always been fun. It's, it, they've always been fun to read for me and fun to do. But after I got to 1,000, I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm Splitsville. I'm out. Not going to do it anymore. And uh, I did think, what was it, about four years ago, do I want to con do I want to get back into the hobby? But I was like, nah, I don't want to do this, you know. Who would read it now? Like, I made a lot for Megan at the end, and then kind of that was, and then a few more for a few other people, and then stopped. And I uh, thought, that was it. I've, I've done my ending. But I do like, you know, it's almost like, like I said, an exaggerated diary of my life. Well, a lot of things have happened in those nine years, right? I've had four kids, since then, and about, and, I, and I'll be honest. For the past couple of years, I've thought about you know, oh, this would make a great issue. This would make a great story art. This would be funny to make fun of this in a comic book. But it's just dedicating my time. Now, one thing that really touched me and might get me into doing them later on this year is my sister told me during our beach vacation that she misses those comic books. I used to draw them as a kid, and now that she has kids, she was telling her kids about it. They want to read it, which they can. You know, those were, I remember the ones I made for my sister were safe for work. I mean, all mine were basically pretty much safe. <clears throat> but, um, you know, the only thing I'd worry about is, you know, who I used to make fun of and hate back in the day, because I don't care about, you know, hating this drama queen back in college. Back, I don't care about her anymore. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I, my sister's like, I wish you'd make a comp book for me if you if you'd like if you could get if you ever get back to doing it, and me and my kids because I think that'd be fun. And I was like, oh, that's really nice because you know whenever I got a request like that, then in fact that's what I used to work off of. I wouldn't do a new one until I got a request, and I kept getting requests until uh, until I'd made like forty something issues. I can't remember. I think it was three short of fifty when the request stopped coming in. And I realized that one of my little brothers always read my comic book, but never had a character. So I did like a two-issue series for him, even though he didn't ask for it. But I said, here, I'm making a character, and you're going to be a superhero now. And then after that, I did issue 50, which I thought was the end. And then a few years later, I did issue 100, which I thought was the end. And I think I kept saying that for like issue 200, 300. But when I got to issue 400, I realized I should stop saying this is the end. Because, I mean, people keep requesting these. People keep enjoying them. You know, I enjoy making them. I made a few for myself, too. I made one series for myself just because I said, well, I've never made a comic book for me, so let me do a series for myself. And then everything else was for you know, my roommates. I did them for roommates all the time. All the time roommates got them. And good friends of mine would get them. So, you know, after after doing... And my art artistic skills never... Well, I mean, uh, it's, it's still the evolution of a stick man. They hardly ever improved at all in those years <laughs> that I was drawing the comic books. So, I, 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 how long did it take me to do a 1,000 issues? I, I, I want to say, like, 30 years. I can't remember. Well, let me see. If I started, I think I started in 93. I can't remember. I'd like to say 93, 2003, 2000. So, 20 years, maybe. 20 years I was doing those. Uh, on and off and everything and you know that that's just one of the things I used to do and the artwork is not that good I, I would like to share some of the covers again because people are like well what 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 was these about so maybe on a stream I'll do that but uh, that's a hobby that I may may get back into that that was interesting that was fun 
Other things, things I want to do, but I just can't right now because of time constraints, is working out. Um, b- because I have two newborns, I have to take care of them. They don't go to bed. No one goes to bed till nine. By the time I get get dressed, get change, get up to the um, uh, gym, gyms close at ten now. Ever since the pandemic, no one wants to open. Uh, no one wants to stay open all night long. So gone are the twenty four hour gyms, at least in our area, and that really hurt me. Because that was the only way. Because I'd put the girls to bed and then do a workout. Well, now when I tried to do it uh, earlier this year and stuff, I tried to, you know, say, okay, maybe I can get everyone to bed and go work out. Well, by the time I got there, it's you know, 45 minutes before they close, and I have an hour-long workout. And they'll rush you out of there the last 10 minutes. I don't blame them. It's late, and they just want to close up shop and go home. But. I was getting sloppy with my reps, just trying to speed through things. And I was like, this is not going to help me grow at all, you know, grow muscle, get toned or anything. Just kind of half, halfway, you know, half-assing it the whole way. So I said, you know what, I just need to do maybe just the elliptical. And so I do that for 30 minutes. But that was my entire workout because that's really all I had time for without being rushed. Because from 9.15 to 9.45, I could do my elliptical. But then after that, they're already saying, last call, you know, get, get, get out of here. And for me, it just didn't feel worth it. So we finally, finally dropped our uh, membership. And I plan to pick it up again once the uh, kids get a little bit older, maybe when they're two. I don't know. But until then, what do I do? I don't know. I don't know. I I, I do some walking every once in a while. That's not really that stressful. I want to do a little bit more. I tried P90X and hurt my back. Uh, Believe it or not, doing the, uh, what, the ab, the ab workout I mean, my abs are sore, of course, but my back is killing me. <clears throat> Doing those crunches just put it hurting on my back. And I mean, I am getting older and I am realizing it, but when I move to my side to do the side crunches, my hips are bothering me. I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, I, I, and yes, a little bit of it is me out of shape. Woo, I'm very out of shape. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, but I am hurting a lot too. <laughs> And if it was just my stomach hurting, you know, just because I did the crunches, I can live with that. But when I'm getting back spasms because I pulled a muscle in my back or something during the crunches, that's no good because now I'm out again. I'm out for a full week, at least until the back calms down. So what do I do? Well, I mean, I try to keep active. I always There's always stuff to do around the house, cleaning up, do, you know, chasing the girls around, playing with them. So trying to stay as active as I can, but I do want to stay in shape. I do want to stay in shape. It's just really, really hard. It's really hard. Yes, prepping a meal of chicken or eggs like I usually do is, is, is a good meal, and I can live off that for 30 days or longer on my diets I have, but it's also time-consuming. I do not have the time to make that meal. I just don't. The time does not, for kids does not allow me to. I mean, every once in a while when I can, I will do it. I will prep it and get it ready to go. But until then, I really can't. So I am trying to cut down on what I eat, trying to cut down, of course, on the sweets, Uh, drinking tons of water, drink three bottles of water. That's probably not enough. Someone's probably screaming, no, Matt, you should drink six. Okay, well, I make sure I drink at least three. Sometimes I do four. But on the average, it's going to be three bottles, bottled water. I have the bottled water that I refill, and I drink three a day, you know, and uh, that is in between maybe an energy drink, uh, Bang Energy, the zero cal uh, energy is my drink of choice, and so I will have one of those. It's like my treat, my treat, and uh, if I have drank all of my waters, then, only then, this doesn't happen every night because sometimes I'm, fin- I'm nursing my last water at the end of the day, um, then I will, as dessert, have a soda. That is my dessert there. I'm not really... You know, I mean, I like ice cream, but I can live without ice cream. I love cookies. I can live without cookies. I can live without most sweets. But the thing I have a hankering for the most, if I do get the urge, is a soda. So that's my little treat. I'll have like a little canned Pepsi or something like that, you know. Um, Zero drinks would be great. I sometimes will get those. I don't feel as guilty getting a zero drink as I would like a Pepsi, which has the calories. But at the same time, if I drink on my water, if if I'm a good boy, I'll do it. So uh, that's a hobby. Getting into back, getting back into working out, I'd love to do. I'd love to do because I need to stay active as much as I can. Uh, I will take. I don't mind going up and down the stairs in my house because that's that's a great way to you know loosen up, get a workout in. So anything that can somewhat uh, take the appearance of a workout, I am totally for. Uh, another hobby I used to have, I used to play guitar. Used to play, not not de- I mean decently, but not good, not good. Never would I join a band. Never would someone say, "Hey, that guy." 
has some talent. He has some. He he's showing some. You know, well, he's a good prospect. I can't think what the thing is. He's he's showing that he has a natural ability to play the musical instrument. No, that's not me. Um, I can strum along, play a few chords. Uh, the best I did was lead a um, college uh, Bible study back in the day. You know, in music because the other guitar person had, had graduated. So for a very short time, I was a guitar person for like one semester until someone else came. I was like, oh, good. You can be the guitar person now. Because I was always scared. I'd mess up. But uh, I, I did all right. Well, I lost the guitar when I got married. I lost it in the move. I had no idea. I, I could have sworn I moved the guitar to my parents' house. It's not there. I don't believe anyone took it. Definitely didn't sell it. But my guitar is gone. Now, of course, if you don't practice... You'll never be that good. And I was never excellent anyway. Is that something I want to take up? Do I want to take up guitar again? No, I do not. I do not. It's fun to play, but don't don't need to take up that hobby. No. Do I need to learn a new hobby now? You know? No. The last new hobby I acquired was probably um, uh, board games. And I think that's it for me. That's as exciting as I get. I try to get back into baseball cards because I used to love baseball cards. I think Wes and I talked about this uh, in a podcast a long time ago, but... With baseball cards, uh, Tops, the company, just pushed me out of the hobby again because, uh, like I said, I bought a complete, I bought a box set at like Target or something, or no, I got one for Christmas and opened it up and sleeved it first week in January and realized I was missing one of the common cards out of the box. So I asked Tops for a replacement and they said no because it was last year's set. I was like, dude, it is like January second. You know, it's you know now it's technically last year, but come on, you don't have comments from that. You won't give me one. I'm not asking for a special rookie card, you know, that's super expensive. I'm just asking for a regular common, and that's when I got back out. I collected baseball cards for maybe two years <clears throat> until I backed back out of the hobby. Will I ever get back in? No, it's too expensive now. It's r- really not worth my time. Now, if my son wants to get into baseball cards, oh. First off, that would be incredible because I can't see that happening. But um, And, oh, I should mention sports in general. Sports in general I've kind of uh, grown out of. Now, I, I lost my love of basketball over a decade ago. Over a decade. It was before Megan and I even met. I started losing my interest in basketball. I used to fill out the March Madness thing, watch it with my dad all the time. We all used to fill out our little brackets. I don't even care anymore. Um, I used to watch the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs all the time with my brothers. And as the years went by, I think I think that kind of drifted away after my first year or so with Megan. Um, I would watch the Stanley Cup playoffs, you know, watch hockey. I used to, and whenever the Red Wings would play. And now I'm more like, ah, eh, I'll keep up with the statistics or the Sports Center update, you know. Um, I'm still cheering for my Red Wings. I couldn't name the entire team like I used to. I maybe know one or two players now. And I know exactly where they are in the division, which is, you know, near the bottom of the barrel. But yeah, my love, and I still wear my hockey shirts every once in a while, but I'm not that big of a hockey fan. Football, I lost interest for that just a couple of years ago. That was recent, probably prior to the year of my girls being, uh, you know, born, my first girls being born, is when I started to lose my love for it. Maybe it was in 2019, period. I was like, you know what? This just isn't exciting. I mean, I keep up with Auburn. They've been decent from time to time. They're more frustrating than decent. And not because someone says, oh, just because they're not a winning team, you don't care. Well, I mean, winning team, yeah, everyone would be interested in a winning team. But it's just like, I was like, you know what? I can miss a football game. I don't. It got to be where I didn't want to miss any football. Then it got to where, well, I just don't want to miss Auburn play. And then it got to where we're like, well, you know what? I can do other things. And over the over the past couple of years, I've just lost complete interest, which is I, I, one of my good friends, uh, Spencer, who I only talk to during football season. He knows, I think he's gotten the clue that I've kind of lost interest in football, but he still talks to me every once in a while because, you know, he wants to keep that friendship alive. And I love talking to him, too. And I feel like I let him down since I don't really know that much about college football anymore. But that's kind of gone out the back, gone out the door now, and I don't really care about football in general. Never cared about the NFL to begin with. And then finally, baseball is the only thing I'm clinging to. I'll be honest, though. Baseball, it was begging me not to like it for years. The past two years have been awful. I hate the extra inning rule. Um, I did not watch the playoffs in 2020 or 2021. Um, I will only watch the World Series. But 2020 almost killed my, killed my love for baseball completely. It just didn't feel like baseball. And 2021, with the extra innings rule, didn't feel like baseball either. In fact, I did 
not watch the entire World Series game for game. I did come in and out of certain games. The last game I always watch, but in and out of the other games too. So even that one's kind of, you know, I mean, not that I'm losing my interest. I, I will listen to the Mets on the radio when I think about it and will always watch them if they're on TV. But, uh, and I mean, they're doing good. I mean, knock on wood right now. But they may they're they're going to end up losing the division. I just know it. But I'm still watching that. And that's really the only sport I'm hanging on to. Would I want to get back into sports? Heck no. I don't think so. I got better ways to occupy my time. But anyway, hey, I'm done. I'm done. Hit hit my 30 minutes. So there you go. Hope if you're listening to this over your lunch break. Hope you have a great day. Rest of your day. And I'll see you next time on Princes of the Universe. <laughs>